Hi there, uh, welcome to the twelfth of these Baz tutorials and today I'm going to do something where um, I'll take a file and play bits of it back, I guess drums because it says drummer on the name of this tutorial, play uh, little snippets back according to some kind of probability function. Um, just to get the ball rolling on this whole thing, there is an object which if we make click N for a new object called table um, which has a kind of a graphical interface you can see if you double click the object the table object you can put um, values in there so it's kind of an XY storage thing but one of its um, excellent functions is that of a probability table so if you just for just to uh, humor me, why don't you bring up the inspector uh, on this? You can use Command I for the inspector. Um, but the table inspector, if we click the All tab, uh, one thing we'll see here is a table range, and that's the y axis, um, and the size is the x axis. And I'm only going to be interested in, let's say, four different, um, the probabilities of four different things happening. Let's say, three drum hits and a not hit. <clears throat> so I'm going to put in the table size four there. Uh, we might come back to this inspector in a bit, but for the moment, I'll just change the size to four. When we double click again, we'll see now our X range is only zero to three. Uh, we can also resize this table, which is something I think I'll do right now because it's taking up way too much of my real estate here. And that's pretty much great. Uh, we want a way of um, banging this table. And for the moment, let's just put a metronome in here, so a new object, N. And metro, um, I'll tell you why I'm, well, it might come clearer as to why I put the number 176 in there. Uh, maybe the 76 is for Philadelphia that I hope do well this season since uh, the Suns are out of it. So we're going to bang this table. It doesn't say you can bang it according to there. It probably does somewhere in the help file. Yeah, it says random. doesn't say much. All right, so I'm going to connect the outlet of my metro to the left inlet of that table. I'll need a toggle, so I'll bring up a T, T on my keyboard to make a toggle and connect the toggle to the inlet of my metro and I'm just going to look at the numbers coming out of this so I'll put a, a number box here, I on my keyboard to create an integer box and that's great. If I start up my metro and double click the table object so I can see again what's going on, I can raise the probability of certain things. Okay, now the probability of one is pretty much the only probability there is or well that's the only value I have is for one um, now if I give it some zero that's going to switch between one and zero if I give it a little bit of two it'll occasionally go to two um, and I give it a whole heap of three and it's going to go to three more than anything else so you can see like the uh, y values here pretty much tell you what the relative probability of one thing happening over another. So what I'm going to want to do, or what I'm going to do anyway, is I'm going to have, uh, let's say, one, or I'm going to have zero be silence, uh, which would make sense on some level. Uh, one is going to be one kind of sound, two is going to be another kind of sound, three is going to be another kind of sound. And we can basically layer this thing up to make something that sort of resembles a probabilistic drum machine sort of thing. All right, I'm going to turn that off for a second. I need um, some more stuff here. <coughs> um, well, yeah, I need to be able to play something back. So let's go ahead and make uh, an SF play object. So an N for new SF play. This is the thing that plays files from the hard drive. If You've forgotten that much already. And I'm going to open a file here. So a message. Um, it's one thing I'm going to want to do is open a file. And let's stick with something we've used before called jongli.aif. And again, if you want to get a close-up on that, that's jongli.aif. And let's uh, connect the outlet of that message to the SF play, 
And what else am I doing here? I'm going to, um, <clears throat> since I'm just going to repeat this same thing, I'm going to play back different fo parts of this same file. So I'm going to put here another message, uh, M on your keyboard again for the message, seek, and I'm going to put the message seek with two replaceable arguments, so $1, $1, $2, uh, and what this will be, be what the way it will come out of here is seek with two values, and the $1 will be a start value in time, and the $2 will be an end value in time. So I'm going to hook up my seek into the in outlet of my seek to the inlet of my SF play. I'm going to have to have a way of um, reading back which part of that SF play I'm accessing. So I'll need a list with two numbers in it. Let's say I'll make a pack object. So n for new object and pack. Um, and by default, pack is created with two inlets, one for the um, second element in the list as it says there in the help thingy and uh, element one in the list yeah all right a couple of integer boxes now for the inlets on these packs for the time values uh, i on my keyboard or i i can't say i properly because i have some australian going on outlet of my integer box into the right side of the pack and another integer box i on my keyboard and go into the left inlet of my pack. I might make these align like so. Alright, uh, yes. And as with anything to do with the signal world, we need some way to play it out through our sound card. So I'm going to make an easy DAC. I haven't found the shortcut for that. There probably is one. Uh, there's my easy DAC. We've made that about a million times already, or at least 12. Okay, so I'm going to hook up the outlet of my SF play there to the inlet of my easy DAC. Uh, one more thing I probably, well I'll lock this patch because I'm going to do a little clicking around. Start up my easy DAC, open up my file here and let's see what we've got if I just trigger that. Alright, you'll notice that yeah, um, changing the number in the right number box there is changing the end point of the sound but you don't hear it. Changing this first value in this list does um, change the start, well you can verify that. Alright, so that changes the start of where we're, we're playing back from. Um, this doesn't change anything, this is because pack, the right inlet of a pack, um, only changes, only output, oh, well, it only stores a value, it doesn't output, and the, the, the value coming into the left inlet of pack actually outputs it. If we want a pack that um, outputs on both right and left inlets, we would use pack without a C. All right, so why don't you just go ahead and unlock your patch and get rid of the C on your pack. Now you have a pack uh, like that. Now you can change the end point as well as the start point on the fly. Good, good. All right. Um, I guess I'll try. Um, here's something I... Um, Maybe I didn't have this figured out so much. Um, Alright, so between me messing around with that number and you messing around, you probably just got a hella noise going on.